Hello everyone, welcome to Rhythm in Africa. So finally, the Mbira Lesson 1 is here. Let's check it out. So the Mbira is a Zimbabwean instrument, but is also played in some parts of Mozambique and some parts of South Africa. Uh, and there are many types of Mbiras, but on this channel we'll just focus on two of the most popular kinds, which are, the first one is the Mbira Zawadzimu. And the second one is the Nyunga Nyunga Mbira, which is smaller and lesser keys and easier. So that's the one we're going to start with. So the Mbira belongs to the idiophone family of instruments. Uh, I made a whole episode explaining what idiophone and all those other families uh, means. Uh, you can go check it out. Uh, so uh, it, it consists of the soundboard at the bottom where all the keys are placed on top. And then it's got an iron an iron rod or a metal rod which suppresses the keys and keeps them firmly attached uh, on the soundboard so that they don't uh, get out of tune and then there's a bridge to support the uh, the keys from underneath and then there's the keys so the keys are also called uh, the mbiras and there's also the resonator so that resonator is that big circular thing um, it's, it, it, its function is just to act as an acoustic amplifier. It doesn't make uh, any uh, musical notes, but it just amplifies the notes that are already there. So remember the on the marimba episode, the resonator is also like the acoustic amplifier. It's the same thing happening here. So I've been trying hard to come up with a system to help learn this instrument, and it hasn't been easy at all because of the layout of the notes, which is not straightforward at all. So there is a reason why the notes are laid out like this. And one of them is actually the approach which was taken in building the instrument at the beginning. So initially this, this wasn't intended as an instrument for entertaining others or teaching others. It was uh, a friend to someone who's doing a long, lonely job like herding cattle. So they'd go with this Mbira uh, and then they'll entertain themselves. So because they're the only ones who are playing the instrument, it wouldn't be necessary to make it playable or to make it make sense for everyone else. So another reason for this strange note layout is simply ergonomics. So if you wanna practice or play the instrument comfortably for a long time uh, they placed the shorter notes at the ends and the longer notes towards the middle so that it's easier for your thumbs to to reach all the notes comfortably so with all this considered it makes sense that the mbira is a little bit tricky to teach or to learn um, but the lens that other people went to try to theorize and visualize the patterns involved in playing this instrument is amazing but this channel is known for keeping things simple so don't worry let's go to tuning now so to get this instrument properly in tune you either slightly carefully tap either this way or this way to make the tins uh, or the mbiras longer or shorter and that slightly shifts the pitch of the of the mbiras and you can tune them that way let's go to how you play the instrument now so if you remember on the marimba lesson two uh, the notes of the marimba are laid out linearly in a line uh, and this is similar to the piano in, in, in the sense that you can play the scale going one direction from uh, your left hand side to your right hand side. But on other instruments like the guitar for example, uh, the scale doesn't go one direction which means you have to approach the mbira the same way you approach the guitar which is basically memorizing patterns. Um, and, and this reminds me of something. Um, the Mbira has an English nickname called Thumb Piano, but I think it's more accurately a thumb guitar. The marimba is the one that's more similar to a piano. So when playing chords on a guitar, you memorize where your fingers should go and then play all the notes at the same time, which is playing a chord. That's what a chord is, when you play all the notes at the same time at the same time even on a piano on any instrument right so but the mbira's approach is a little bit different because you don't play the notes at the same time you play them you pluck 
one note at a time using your fingers and but you'll be plucking the same group of notes that belong in a chord right but you'll be playing them one after the other so if these chord notes are not played at the same time but rather played one after the other they stop being called a chord and start being called arpeggios so as you can see the mbira is an arpeggio machine so this is mbira lesson one on mbira lesson two we'll take a deeper look into the uh, note groupings and chord progressions and different patterns but for now i want you to listen to, to this uh, i'm going to play you something and i want you to pay attention to something <laughs> you to see on the short piece that I just played is the cycle of the chord progression or the chord changes so the cycle lasts for 12 bars so if you know blues music it's traditionally played using 12 bars as well that's why it's called the 12 bar blues so as you can see the mbira is a blues machine so if you've listened to a lot of Zimbabwean music, this will become immediately familiar to you because just like blues music, a lot of artists have used similar chord progressions to make a lot of different songs. So because this chord progression became popular and known amongst a lot of Mbira players, it became possible and easier for Mbira players who've never played together before to meet for the first time and jam together and uh, make unique uh, compositions on the spot which is called improvisation so if you know jazz music if you mix uh, bluesy progressions um, arpeggios and improvisation you get jazz music so the mbira is also a jazz machine so the main difference between mbira music and jazz and blues music is just that mbira music was composed 400 years earlier so the next episode is going to be interesting because Mbira music along with its history and chord progressions and everything was transferred to modern instruments like guitars and bass and drums and that's how the genre called Chimurenga was born. So no more spoilers, see you on the next one.